Welcome back everyone. So today I wanted to talk about what I'm doing in my garden to improve its uh, benefits to wildlife. Initially, last year, I created a wildflower area and I was never particularly concerned with whether things were traditionally within the idea of something being a native plant. Now, why should it matter? There's so many non-native species, the term native doesn't really make sense anyway because it varies from country to country. In the UK, it generally means that a plant has been here for the last 10,000 years, which is the previous ice age. That was until I had a conversation with Joshua Stiles, who gave me a completely different view of plant selection. He would look up in the literature how many different species a particular plant would help support, and that would be a criteria for which he could use in its selection. Anyway, it's all getting a little bit complicated, and um, that's one of the things that I found when you look into meadows, you don't really know what even a meadow means. This book, Sowing Beauty, by James Hitchmo, he actually even says in one of the paragraphs, the word meadow is so used and misused in everyday speech as to render it almost meaningless. So I'm doing something in my garden that mixes up something that is both attractive, looks good in its first year while the other plants are developing, but is also easy and straightforward to do. So let's get into it. We're absolutely obsessed with lawns. I've spoken to quite a lot of people that think a lawn is low maintenance. A lawn is literally the most high maintenance thing that people have in their gardens. You need to put a fair amount of chemicals on it to make it look good. There are ways that you can do organic lawn care, but why would you do that when there's a prettier and more environmentally friendly alternative that's way lower maintenance. So the method that was used by Wirral Borough Council, and I would recommend to any homeowner if you're doing any reasonably large area, is to scarify to 50% soil exposure. So that is, rake off half of the grass that's there. If you don't have a scarifier, then what I've done, and this does have some benefit in that you, if you remove the top layer of grass, that removes quite a lot of the fertility, but what you're, what you're doing by doing this is preventing the dominance of perennial ryegrass. Now, perennial ryegrass is great for hard wearing lawns, but in, especially in a fertile area, will dominate whatever else you put in it. So you'll, you'll never see any germination, you'll, you'll never see any proliferation of the species that you want because they're always being outcompeted. And that gets down to another point, is that if you remove the top part of the lawn, so long as it's not a huge area, then you're reducing the fertility. And the fertility does have an effect because plants that can thrive in a fertile environment will dominate the plants that are native to a less fertile environment. The management of this sort of space is actually really, really easy. It's so much easier than a lawn. It only needs to be cut once a year rather than as a minimum every fortnight for a lawn. And the best time to be doing this ideally would be in the autumn and that's because one of the key species is yellow rattle and yellow rattle needs some intense cold in order to germinate. Yellow rattle is semi-parasitic to lawn grasses or, or any grasses and it feeds on its roots. If you don't have this then the flowering plants will just be completely dominated by the grasses.
Sorry about that. It was getting pretty hot just doing all of that digging in the garden, so even though it's February, I had to take the hoodie off. And maybe not completely necessary, but you know, you've got to have fun while you're doing it. Right, so that's that done. Uh, fairly major risk, I think. You know, lawn care's a big thing. So if there's uh, some YouTubers seeing this, they're probably gonna be hateful of me just because uh, I've just ruined a perfectly good lawn. Um, but there you go, that's, that's the sort of thing that I like to do, just vandalize, so get used to it. So I just added up the two little sections and then added a bit because I've got a few other little bits to fill in. And I've weighed it out, so I've got uh, at 21 square meters, it says to apply it at four grams per square meter. And I've just weighed that out uh, and it's in this little mug. So I'm also going to just look at the size of what, say, 10 square meters is, and hopefully half of this will be gone by the time I've done that. If you're really concerned about it, then get a quadrant, weigh out four, see what four looks like, uh, and then you'll have a way of using that as a barometer. Clearly, if you're doing a much bigger project, you're gonna need to use spreaders um, or figure it out because it's gonna take you ages if you're just weighing it out by the teacup if you're doing several hectares, but you're probably not watching this video if that's what you're doing, so <laughs> should be all right. I've heard of people mixing the seed in with sand as well, which makes it a little bit easier to know where you've spread it. I haven't bothered because I can see on my lawn. Uh, it wasn't particularly difficult to spread. And you can see here, you just massage it in with a rake or I just use a stiff broom, which helps increase the amount of surface area of each seed that's in contact with the soil, which just improves the germination rate. In the book, Do Bees Need Weeds? by Gareth Richards and Holly Farrell, they mentioned that insects are becoming extinct at a rate eight times faster than mammals. You know, that's the reason why we should be doing this sort of thing, because our gardens represent a huge area of land in the UK, far bigger than all the national parks combined. So by taking action on this sort of thing and including some wildflowers in your garden, you're going to be helping So here's the seed mixture that I've used. It's from Meadow Mania. Uh, I'm not, obviously not being paid for this, given that the video is likely to get somewhere in the region of about 15 views. But just so you know, some of the funnier ones that I wasn't aware of the common names for them, which is Leontodon hispidus, or its common name, is rough hawk bit, which sounds like a euphemism to me. Yeah. I wouldn't mind a little bit of rough hawk bit uh, and a little bit of ladies' bed straw. Well, yeah, well, you shouldn't trust him. He was found rooting around in the ladies' bed straw, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> 